Thriving Solopreneur Show, where you learn the stories and systems that have turned hardworking, self-employed business owners like yourself into highly successful, leisurely entrepreneurs. This show is dedicated to those who went into business for themselves because they had an idea or suggestion that ignited their passions to do more, to do it better, and to solve a problem in our community. Whether your business started in a basement, a garage, or at a kitchen table, this episode will bring to you a system, a tip, or an entrepreneur that has been where you are and can guide you to living the fulfilling life you desire for yourself. Here's your host and serial solopreneur, Janine Bolin. Oh my gosh. Or Pepto Bismol or one of those. (laughs) I don't know. I haven't well, reached that age yet. <laughs> Welcome to The Thriving Solopreneur. This is Janine Bull, and you caught Darren and I goofing off, which is normal for us as we're getting ready to record. Um, and what we're doing today is uh, what I love about The Thriving Solopreneur is being able to chat with people who, like yourself, are busy working their business. And it's usually just them or they might be themselves and a team of people that support them. But for the most part, you know, it's me, myself, and I that's running the business. So thanks for being with us today, Darren. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here, Janine, as always. <laughs> so what's really fun, what we were talking about before we got on was this, that challenge of number one, trying to find your direction. Because when you first start with the big idea, whatever the big idea is for your business, you almost never really start making money at it right off the bat. Did you find Correct. that to be the case? Yeah, tell us a little Absolutely. bit about your- big idea that you were going for my big idea after leaving my my previous career which you know my my quote real job um uh i really thought i was going to reinvent myself as a media producer and i started studying and doing all of that stuff to be a media producer and then just as it so happens sometimes the road turned and voice acting opportunities came up. Um, so I thought, fine, I'll, tr- I'll try that. Um, and it all happened rather organically. I already had a recording studio in my house from being a, a musician and I had been on a pirate radio show for a while. So I had some mic time, but really none of it was me intentionally trying to be a voice actor. Um, but then a friend said, hey, you could make money on this website. And so I thought, all right. And I think, you know, that's one of the biggest things for solopreneurs is don't be afraid to change course because sometimes it might, your dream job might be behind that curtain. Um, So I made that switch and thought, why not? And I set up a, a profile on this one website and immediately started getting work. Now, granted, it was pretty low level. It wasn't paying well. It, but it got me a lot of practice. Um, Then a couple of years after that, uh, I was struggling, absolutely wondering what am I doing here? And were all these choices good ones? And I don't I'm questioning (laughs) everything about my existence. (laughs) Yeah, that self-doubt that kicks in at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. is that magic time, man. Yeah, basically like all waking hours uh, for me. And, um, and then very randomly, once again, my mom sent me a clipping out of the LA Times, which mentioned these other websites that paid pro rates. And I thought, oh, uh, uh, it, it, was, it was definitely a leap of faith because I had to uh, sign up for subscriptions to these and it certainly cost me a bit of money. Um, but I thought, you know what, now's the time. I mean, if I'm going to make it, I got I to gotta do what it takes to make it. Um, so I... Uh, got on these sites. I started auditioning and auditioning and auditioning. And I just said to myself, this is the job I want. I'm going to work it like it's my job. And I went to work every day for as long as I could stand it. (laughs) um, uh, You know, it's like they say about solopreneurs, you know, you can work whatever 14 hours a day you want. (laughs) But you're going to be putting in time, baby. You're going to be yeah. putting in time. You're going to work harder for your business than you've ever worked for anybody else. And and yet, at the same time, we can also say out of the other side of our mouths that we have more freedom than we've ever had in our entire life. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because we were well, talking about that earlier. 
Yeah, you know, uh, it all sort of goes into this, the finish what, what I was saying there, you know, is that getting involved with this other thing and just taking that turn ended up putting me on my path. And um, yeah, you do have to put in more time. However, the thing is, is that once I really stepped into that role and decided that I'm just going to commit to this like it's my job, it didn't feel like work. I was putting in the effort when it was mine. It didn't feel like it did when I was going to the other job and working, chasing somebody else's dream. I was chasing my own dreams. So it wasn't a job. It was my life. And that was one of the biggest differences for me was I like putting in the time. And, you know, I work six days a week now and I like it. Granted, right. I can take off in the middle of the day and do stuff if I want to, or, you know, if I need to block out a week just because I feel like it or go on vacation or something, that's just, that's e easy enough to organize. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, that's, uh, it's that figuring out what it is and sticking with it is probably the biggest thing at the beginning. Correct. And that was one of the things I wanted you to kind of chat a little bit more about a lot of solopreneurs will come to me and say, yeah, and I know I suffer from shiny object syndrome. So I don't know who <laughs> that was that first came out with that, but that was not something that was talked about six years ago. So obviously something happened that Janine's missed the, the pop culture reference boat on that one. But I just, I just said, well, just because you have shiny object syndrome, that just means a lot of things make you happy to do them. So just remember though, that you are here to move your business forward. So you wanted to be a media producer. That was, that was going to be your thing. You ended up going right. into vo voiceover. But mm -hmm. now with 2020 glasses looking behind us, you know, mm -hmm. we can see where maybe all that stuff that you learned about being a media producer put you in the right mindset to promote yourself as a voiceover person. Yeah. So how, what, how did that transition help with you? Yeah. Well, for starters, shiny object syndrome, I actually like self-identified as a trout or a raccoon or something at that period of time because every shiny thing I chased. Uh -huh. And, um, and, it actually came down to uh, a talking to a friend who was more established in business than I was, who had said, and I you was know, sort of seeing this like at cocktail parties where people would say, so what do you do? And I'd rattle off six things and you'd just sort of see them like not compute. And I realized that you have to pick, even if you do more than one thing, and I think you should do more than one thing, you know, diversifying your income streams is, is super important. Um, especially these days when you don't know how the world's going to shift. And when it shifts, it seems to go pretty quickly. Um, but you want to be able to just have that quick knee jerk, confident reaction that says, hi, I'm a, and fill in your blank, not for being able to do it for yourself, but be able to do it for those people. And you're giving them what they can talk to other people about you about. So when I say, hi, I'm a voice actor, you know, I sure I get the same, general questions that come back, but I know that they're going to say, oh, did you meet Darren? I was like, yeah, he's a voice actor. And they're not like, he just said, I'll rattle off all these things and I don't remember what any of them are. And now I don't, you know, what does he do? Uh, so branding yourself as one thing is important. Um, when I slipped into it, really, it was just, this is a thing that's marketable. It's a thing I can do. It's a thing that if I get good at it, will definitely pay the bills. And more than that was, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I just loved it. And if you don't like for a career like this, if you don't love it, it's madness. You'll hate it. You know, there's, there's no middle ground. There's no liking it and getting by. It's like, you <laughs> it's, really have to have your, have your full body and soul invested in it. It's binary. But, it's like I tell people, if you're a solopreneur, you have to be pretty binary. You have to either love it or hate it. And that's how you have to operate. If you try to do great, yes. like you said, you'll confuse people. And be really honest with yourself. And know that, you know, no matter whether or not you love it, there's going to be a ton of hard work that goes along with it. Because there's aspects of the, of the job that everybody hates. It may not be the same thing, but it's like, you know, there's always something for most voice actors. Since we tend to be creative people, we hate marketing, you know, <laughs> but still you got to do it or you don't survive. And you got to find ways to make it fun. Uh, but that's also the cool thing is you don't have to go battle against a uh, board of directors or partners or anything else about how to do it you can take your all your own chances because why not it's just you that's and, and that's the, the thing that freedom and that lifestyle so i always encourage people if you want to go into business for yourself 
make sure you establish the lifestyle you want first. Like have a crystal clear vision on what is the life that you want. Do you only want to work eight hours a week or, or eight hours a day? Or do you want to work 14 hours a day for four days a week? I mean, I've talked to solopreneurs that they'll put in 36 straight hours, really hard press, doing projects, getting stuff done so that they can make it to the surf in California, right? You know, mm -hmm. and so it's like you build a life for yourself and it's truly possible, but at some point the rubber's going to have to hit the road and you are going to have to put in the work for that. So yes. for you with your work, you're like, okay, the voice acting, that's great. This is what I do. But you also, I can't remember the number, but you told me earlier how many hours a day you spend just going after the next job, you know, auditioning. How many hours a day do oh, you audition? I spend uh, about, depending on the day, I spend about four hours on the mic because that's about all my voice can take. After about four hours, I start to sound funny. Uh, and, and, and we're not talking about a good funny right? yeah not yeah not not like cartoon character funny it's like not sounding like darren funny um and then the other four is spent doing um doing marketing efforts whether it's direct reaches reach outs or uh social media or working on my website or something like that it's basically i i have a i work from 10 to 8 every day and with two hours for exercise in the middle Exactly. And so that makes for a long day without even having to commute. And I think about yeah, having to go and my, get a my, commute. My, my, commute's, my commute's about four steps. <laughs> Down into the basement, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's one of the things that I, I like to share with people is um, early on, you know, solopreneurs were extremely rare. That's not the case anymore, not with telecommuting and all the things that have happened in our society. Yep. As people get prepared to go into business for themselves, as they continue to work, maybe their telecommuting job, and then they want to build something on the side. What is some advice that you would give someone who's just starting out uh, as a solopreneur? Like, I wish somebody had told me, do you have two or three points you want to share? I do. Um, of course, we, we already covered the you got to love it. Uh, one that's that's probably the most important and you got to be really honest with yourself about that another thing you got to be honest with yourself about is doing all of the work that it takes to run your whole business you have to wear like six hats and that's no matter what business you're in it's the same six hats and uh and you gotta devote time for all of them so uh time management right off the bat is uh is really important and then the other thing and this was the thing that it's one of my mantras. It's probably the most important thing I've done for myself was just remind myself that the only way to fail is to quit. And as long as I don't quit, I'll succeed. Right. And I, I totally agree with that. We were, I would tell my students and friends of mine, I'd be like, you can quit all you want, but don't give up, you know, but we all have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, there's, you... been <laughs> there's been times I've just thrown stuff down and go, I quit and I stomp off and my kids are like, yeah, she'll calm down and I'll go outside. I'll go for a walk right. around the block, come back and go, okay, once more with feeling. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Resetting is, is, is important. <laughs> Being in touch with who you are and how you feel and what you need to do for self-care is yeah. super important. And that's actually probably another thing is you got to make time for yourself and your self-care. Um, I actually prioritize um, things like exercise and eating well and that stuff before my job. That's more important because if I'm not healthy and, and feeling and being my best, then I can't do my best work. And mm -hmm. there's, you're wasting your time if you're trying to put in those long all-nighters and just surviving on coffee or something. It's, it, it, just go get a good night's sleep. It's better for you. And there's nothing that you can't finish tomorrow, but, mm -hmm. but finish it tomorrow. <laughs> so and, I'd like and, to and in the long term, don't give up. Yeah, don't. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So quit as many times as you want, but, but don't give up. You can go quit as right. much as you like, you know, but mm -hmm. yeah, don't you dare give up because the world actually needs what you have to offer. And that's Indeed. one of the things that solopreneurs sometimes uh, forget. But I'd like to go back to something that you mentioned, and that's time management, because a lot of lip service is given to time management and project management. And they've got all these, you got an app for everything these days and you have software that everybody recommends. And I found it didn't work for me. Like none of it. I had to mm -hmm. actually build my own. So I have my own view on time management, but I'd love to hear what do you mean and what worked for you? 
Well, um, I have a few things to say about that. Uh, one is uh, actually came organically out of voice acting. I, I read a narration on time boxing. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically where you just assign an amount of time for each individual task you have to do throughout the day or the week or whatever. Um, and I just used the calendar on my phone and alerts from it. And so I block out appropriate amounts of time. I also leave one gap, one section empty because it's hard to stick to exact times on things. And so it's pretty much everything always takes a little longer. So I leave that, that little flex zone there. Um, so that I don't get stressed out at the end of the day. It's another thing to manage your stress. Um, and then lately, the thing I've been on is uh, arranging my day kind of like a school schedule. But instead of hour long classes, they're two hour long. And so I put in my, uh, my vocal warm up time, I put in my audition time, my exercise, uh, my music practice time, uh, as well as all the marketing and website and stuff like that. And, and by uh, breaking it up that way, it's easy for me to trick myself into doing the stuff I don't like to do because I know that it's not like all day I got to sit and market. It's just like, it's only a couple of hours. I can do anything for a couple of hours. I mean, have you ever sat in a dentist chair for two hours? You know, it's like, it ain't going to be that bad. So, uh, and then I know I have a reward coming because I usually try to put something fun at the end of the day. Um, and know, get to know yourself so that when you, you know what parts of the day you're most creative, you know what parts of the day where you might want to just be doing easy, busy work, something like that, and arrange it so that you sort of organically aren't forcing yourself to do these things. You naturally will fall into the task. I agree, because I know for me as an author and as somebody who does a lot of recording like yourself, only minds educational videos, you know, it doesn't matter. It's all creation, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Indeed. It, uh, it, I know my best time is from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. That is the best time for me to do that. So that block's always uh, inviolate. Nobody gets to disturb me during that period of time, which mm -hmm. the joke is with four teenagers in the house, everybody's asleep anyway, which is probably why I'm so productive. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then there's time where, you know, then I have to have breakfast and take a shower and, you know, exercise, all that fun stuff has to fall in there. And so my, my day is not at all traditional in any way, shape or form. And yeah. yet I know I start to kind of flag in my energy around 2.30 to 3. And when that happens, that's when I'm checking the email and I'm looking up answers to things. And like you said, so definitely know what you can do. A, a night owl would not want my schedule, right? My schedule is right. like right during the middle of their prime time REM sleep, right? Exactly. You know, they're going to bed at 2 a.m., <laughs> uh -huh. getting up at 8. So definitely uh, want to say that time boxing is what I kind of fell into by accident. I hadn't read that uh, excellent book that you read, but mm -hmm. I definitely fell into it on my own. So any last bits of advice you want to give to a solopreneur just starting out? Yeah, go for it. Do it. Do it. It's like you have an idea and follow it. You know, I mean, who else is going to do it? You can do it. Do it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because just because you see other people doing it similarly, it doesn't mean that you won't have something that's going to be so unique. And there's 8 billion people on this planet. And there is a demographic that you need to serve. And I think sometimes as solopreneurs, we forget that because we're, it's me, myself, and I in my office. Right. <laughs> but you're bringing you to the table, and that's the coolest thing you can bring. Yeah. Everything, because people want to work with you. And it's really just about finding those people. That's one of the, the biggest things. So don't be afraid to knock on doors and, and uh, you know, reach out and reach out and reach out. Don't, don't be worried about being annoying with sending the emails and asking for what you want. Um, because there's plenty of people out there that are going to answer that email and go, yeah, you're cool. You're exactly who I need. Mm -hmm. And I love it when I hand somebody a business card or when I am talking to somebody and they go, where have you been? I've been looking for you. You're like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, because I've been exactly. looking for you for about three years is what I think as a solopreneur. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> well, Darren, yep. thank you so much. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to be on the podcast with us. And I wish you much luck as you move forward in your career. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, Janine. I really appreciate it. 
And so this is Janine Bolin with The Thriving Solopreneur. And if you have any other questions or services that you are not quite familiar with or you're looking for as a solopreneur, please reach out and touch base with me at janinebolin.com because it's there that you'll fee- find wonderful people like Darren and others who have services, who have products that may help you make your life easier. And that's us for The Thriving Solopreneur. Thank you for listening to The Thriving Solopreneur Show. We hope you found this episode helpful and uplifting. Be sure to visit us at janinebolin.com forward slash podcast, where you'll find a library of videos, books, and podcast programs to guide you to the future you envision for yourself. We also ask that you visit our sponsor, the8gates.com, for the books and online courses that share with you the debt-free living lifestyle that allows business owners like yourself to flourish. Have a great day and see you next time.